Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mark here with Lifecycle Insights. Just want to let, let you guys know that this is new to Lifecycle Insights. Brand new month means that we start over from week one, uh, which is data cleanup. Um, this is a recurring session. So if you've been here with us uh, for the past three weeks, this is technically the first week and, um, and you know, just to how to data clean up best practices and all that good stuff. Um, and if uh, as far as onboarding tasks, and, and if you guys have been onboarding with us, um, I want to show you where you guys can find that. It's right here, right beside your name and on our platform, onboarding tasks. And this is just a checklist. Some of this is automatic. Most of it is not. So as you're going through your onboarding, please make sure that you're uh, clicking off what you need to click off here. Uh, <clears throat> There is a, let's see, couple of links as far as onboarding is concerned. From here on help, where to find new to Lifecycle Insights is if you type in welcome, you can see new to Lifecycle Insights here. This is the link um, and it's just the week one through four as far as the month is concerned. There's a bonus episode, scheduler and report builder and a bonus bonus episode, quality QBRs quick that we will be doing at the end of March. Uh, so next month, um, <clears throat> we have, so, uh, this is where you can find some announcements. Report Locker is here. New Report Builder V2 is also up. Um, we have more stuff coming out. And if you want to see the roadmap on the help button again, hit roadmap. And you can see Q1 and Q2 roadmap right here for you. Uh, <clears throat> and I believe we're going to talk more about that on Friday's call or something else. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, and if you are new to us and you need to sync in um, your your files, this is the sync button right here, and it's just the data sync manager as far as what needs to be done. You can actually see the jobs that have failed in the last twenty four hours, which is because this is our uh, demo site. So please don't be uh, alarmed that that's not how it's supposed to look like. Most of that stuff will be here, and you can just hit refresh uh, and see it. You can also sync now by Checking that Chevron, uh, if you've just loaded more uh, Dell, Lenovo, um, uh, uh, end of life stuff, warranty stuff, hit sync now, it should sync immediately for you. We do sync every night, so um, that should also be taken care of for you um, if you don't get to, uh, to hit that. <clears throat> all right. Uh, if you have done all your onboarding uh, tasks and are stuck, Please reach out. Don't don't be afraid to reach out to me or Alex. I will put our um, Calendly's on the chat. Where, where's my chat button? Oh, here it's up top, of course. Um, and don't hesitate to book some time with us. We are here for you guys. Uh, you guys are the most important people in our lives at the moment. Um, don't tell my wife that. <clears throat> um, okay. So this is week one, once again, uh, and we are here. This is data cleanup. First and foremost, this is our dashboard. And you know our data cleanup usually begins with asset list and user list. So um, I'm going to pick Dharma Enterprises because this is um, one of the uh, companies that still have some duplicates. And we'll show you that later. Uh, so here's the asset list for that. And um, you can do filter by location up here. Uh, which location, uh, Dharma Enterprises, what asset type, whether it be servers, virtual servers, and here's the asset status, which is active or inactive. Um, <clears throat> if, if you have missing data, um, there is a, uh, a, you can export it to CSV and then give it to your service team. Hey, find out, wait, hey, there's some missing information. Uh, <clears throat> this. This trains your, your techs to look for this kind of information and why it's important for your business and your customers. Make sense for, for everybody so far? Any questions, concerns? All right, okay. Um, the differences between company reports and MSP reports is company reports is per company, your clients, MSP reports for you is all your clients. So I have uh, data quality for all my clients here. 
report locker for all my clients asset ad hoc, which means all the assets that I have, which is a lot of assets <clears throat> in, the, in the criteria uh, recommendations roadmap. This is just for us and our team for your MSP, yours and your team. And then the recommendations roadmap is that for just for that company. So there's definitely the MSP reports is just for you guys. And then the company reports is per company, uh, at, per your company. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when I clicked on the MSP reports on here, the top five uh, should, you know, right here should be ready. Anything above 90%, even 80% should be ready to go for a QBR and, and you know, QBR should happen soon for those. Okay. As far as data quality is concerned, um, the key fields on here is end of life data, warranty expiration, and actually there is one more uh, that um, we did not show. It is warranty renewal cost that I like to add every now and then, um, especially it pop populates here. I don't have any for here, but I will explain that later. Okay, so <clears throat> um, end of life data comes from the purchase date of a device. Uh, so, and it, it is pulled by um, our, uh, for integration on uh, warranty vendor lookups and all that good stuff. So if it's missing, it's probably because um, something did not get pulled from your PSA and that's where you have to fix, uh, have your text fix it and find out why it's not pulling uh, that information. Um, <clears throat> uh, end of life, uh, if you know for a fact that that you know that device was purchased on this day, you can actually just hit the purchase date on a device and it will auto populate the end of life for you on our end. Okay. Any questions on that as far as what what are the key fields, end of life, warranty expiration, purchase date, replacement cost for data quality score? Actually, I got a quick one on, on end of yeah, life. Correct. We don't know when it was purchased. If we don't have any other real knowledge of it, how do we de determine a end of life? Uh, the uh, Steve, do you have a? I, well, it's first question I would ask is do you, and Greg, you can tell I've sat through a few of these with these guys. <laughs> um, this data cleanup is 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 the biggest the biggest hurdle for using the product. Um, Oh but my gosh. it's once you get through that, the rest I think is smooth sailing. I'll start say, by saying that. Um, do you, are these name brand computers or like are they Lenovo, Dell, or HP? I, I've got a mix, um, and and honestly, a couple of them are name brand, some of them are not. The not the not ones are difficult. They're you know you either you've got to get that information from the client or you take a best guess at what what it is um you know you can look at the generation of the processor is it does it have an ssd versus a, a hard drive things like that um i'm lucky enough that most of mine are dell or lenovo so it populates 98 percent you know De dell has a great does a great job of missing one here and there but as a whole it does it but um the system if on the ones that are our brand name like that you don't even have to worry about it, it populates easily um i've done i've done it for 33 clients already um the others just use your near your approximate or that's a talking point with your customer to ask that question right yeah okay. these are these are new takeover because we're dell and, and lenovo too we do all that stuff but a couple of these are takeovers and they've got Asus Tech, they've got you know, yeah, to be those, filed by OEM kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> does it, any go ahead? Yeah, it, it, those those in our fleet, at least the takeovers. You're right; those are a problem. I have some home builds in there, and yeah. usually, then what I I I cheat. I will jump on the machine or use my RMM and look at when the operating system was built, and mm -hmm. that. That's another, so I kind of, you know, in a QBR, you're not going to get 100% of the information unless you, unless you got some amazing people who have documented everything 100%. And um, I've been in the MSP world long enough, and Alex is probably laughing at me right now. Um, 
you just you don't you you, you can't get to 100 percent because clients buy stuff that they just don't know when they bought it they they don't have it documented etc so just give it your best shot and and go with like like Mark said earlier, the 80% rule. Fantastic. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, for PCs, process, processor age is easy to um, Google as well. So uh, if you just, you know, Google the processor age and you, a good estimate for end of life would be uh, good. I think um, if you go to uh, Asus's page and type in the product number, I think you should have a, a good um, timeline as well for that end of life for that device. So awesome. Thanks, Steve. I know I, you the best. <laughs> awesome. So, all right, we're, in, we're back in the asset list and I wanted to go ahead and just um, uh, uh, swatch out the end of life for uh, these devices. And I'm going to go ahead and hit red. The blue ones won't be on the budget. Um, this is a price to you, your customer, and, and can become very costly very quickly uh, as far as these um, things are concerned. Now, these are network equipments. I don't have a good one. Let me go back to Creative Designs. I think they have a better. Um, no, because we've cleaned it up. There are no blue ones in Creative Designs. We need to, we, Alex, we need to break some stuff. Uh, just. <laughs> yeah, if you go to show hidden, you'll you'll see a few in hidden. Uh, oh, okay. and unhide, but we do too good a job of spending a lot of time in this one and keeping it clean. No, only only hidden asset is one. Oh, uh, Marty, Marty's <laughs> been cleaning up behind me then. I'll go, I'll go make some trash for you. Okay, thanks. Um, let's go to Hunter Lodge. I think Hunter Lodge had some. Okay, uh, it had some network equipment software. Okay, there's some workstations over here. Okay, so <clears throat> um, if it's not on the, uh, if, if we don't have an end of life for it, it, like I said, it will be costly. It will it will be a surprise to your customer and very um, uh, and very quickly become a problem. So first things first, you gotta you gotta clean that up. And from here, you can actually do a couple of things. Um, you can actually go into the device itself, and you can do the purchase date, end of life right here, if need be. Um, you can add the warranty expiration on there. Without the end of life, guys, it will not be in the budget. That's actually what we're going to talk about next week. So um, the budget is great for you to, to uh, do recommendations and whatnot. So without it, um, <clears throat> it would be a problem. If you want to uh, mass end of life um, items, you can actually just multi-select, choose an action here, and you can either, um, where is update end of life date, and just go ahead and type in an end of life for it. Uh, let's, let's pick November 30th and hit update. And as you can see, it took it out of my list of blue end of life because it now populated an end of life for those devices. Make sense so far? Okay. Um, the next thing you guys got to look at as far as um, data cleanup is duplicates. Um, you can actually see on here, duplicates were found. And to pick it, you can actually hit show only not uh, duplicate non-hidden assets. That Oh, because I took off end of life. There it goes. Um, usually, technically, the duplicates happen because um, <clears throat> you... Uh, somebody manually input it in your RMM and then RMM communicated PSA, PSA switched it to us, but it already had information from your PSA. That's why it's a duplicate. Most of the time you can see the serial number on there. Um, then the device name is different. It's probably because once again, a tech came in there and um, inputted the device name manually. Uh, the best way, um, the best way to do this is uh, to, to get rid of your duplicates is to clean up at the source. You can always hide these, but hiding it just is, is just not the, the proper way. That's, that's how we get into trouble. As far as documentation, Steve was talking about <clears throat> having great people knowing about the documentation processes and all that good stuff. So if you just hide it and you know <clears throat> um, keep it out of sight, out of mind, then your source of truth is going to ca uh, capture more duplicates than anything. Cleaning it up at the source of truth 
um, <clears throat> uh, 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 and marking them as inactive on that side will clean up your data source here and ultimately have a better understanding and have a better budget for your clients. As you can see, these two things coming up twice. So um, <clears throat> adding those into the budget and showing them to your customers that, hey, Mr. Customer, you're gonna have to pay for this for $2,600 instead of just one at 13. Any questions on that? So cleaning up your source as far as duplicates is, is concerned is what we were just talking about. Steve, any, any best practice on this from you and your team? Um, it's a work in progress. The I think you, the point that you you hit that I I agree with wholeheartedly and we are spending a lot of time is we had to go back and really look at our source data because it, it goes back those of you who are old enough to remember um, Geigo garbage in garbage out if your RMM or IT glue or whatever you're using as your source isn't isn't populated correctly or isn't maintained properly you'll never get accurate reports eventually and, and you know i'm i'm at i i always joke and when we have internal meetings we talk about this i'm at the tail end of the process you know the beginning and the end i'm at the beginning selling people stuff i'm at the end of the projects doing the business reviews and what happens before me has to be fixed from my reports to be accurate. So it's it, everybody in your team has to buy into this data cleanup and it's not a one-time cleanup. It's changing your processes and procedures to, to uh, make it so that it, it becomes appropriate behavior in how they handle documenting things. Yeah. Thank you for that. Then, and, and I wanted to, to go ahead and um, use our platform as far as finding out, hey, you know, uh, operating system, you can swatch out the blue, the green, the yellow, that's actually word swatching. Um, <clears throat> uh, and this gives you the, the ability to identify whether or not your data is of use to your customers. So more red and blue means data needs to be cleaned up before talking with your customers. And that's what Steve's going through as far as the tail end that he was just talking about. So it's great. Uh, I love that segue into it. You just, you, you served it up for me and I just had to spike it hard. I love it. So I Mark, I do it. have one question real quick. And that yeah. is uh, with one of these takeover clients that we've got, their serial number is also to be filed, filled by OEM. Is there a way to change? Cause I'm assuming that's why I have these all as duplicates because they're not, they're different computers but they're all to be filed by OEM. Can I change the serial number on computers somehow so that I can, so they don't list as duplicate? Um, yeah. So you can change the serial number here, um, but is, so that's, that's right. That's hard, right? So what's, what's your source of truth saying? What's your PSA, Greg? Do you mind if I ask? Uh, Okay, so is it capturing an auto task as far as the serial number? No, what it's what what data it's basically coming data to auto task, and it's basically giving me a make model and serial number is to be filed by OEM or filled by OEM to be filled. Yeah, by that OEM. so that typically happens when you know, can do this. Yeah, that typically happens when you're buying components and building your own systems and such, and they didn't follow the final step in the process, which is to flash the BIOS with a with an actual. Um, serial number. So what happens in that case is you wind up with exactly what you have. Um, you can change those. The best place to change them would be in ConnectWise or Autotask or whatever that yeah. tool is, yeah. um, but you can change them anywhere. Um, you know, in our tool might be faster, but then you're giving your people back the same bad data when they go look in ConnectWise or IT Glue or Autotask or wherever they see the data. So just That's think about it from that perspective. So if I change it in auto task, then it would update within here when it Correct. doesn't update. Yes. Yep. Okay. When it Great. syncs. Of course, you can also force sync once you've done uh, once you've updated the data so you don't have to wait for the for the evening. Great. Um all right. Uh <clears throat> there is only a couple more things that I'm um uh going to talk about. Technically last or a couple of things is the Microsoft 365 uh summary report. Um, this summary report right here on MSP reports 
uh, gives you the availability as far as what are available licenses for your companies. So you can actually, um, uh, one of our, one of our uh, happiest life cyclers found um, 68 licenses that he could return and save the company money. Um, unfortunately, Microsoft has changed their processes. It used to be monthly for these things. Now it's uh, a yearly uh, spend. So you're gonna have to um, put in your calendar as far as when that, that actually will happen. So um, you have the ability to save your company, uh, that company some money. The last part of data cleanup is user list. Um, user list uh, is with Microsoft 365. If your uh, user list doesn't look like actual names and emails, and it's all jumbled up letters and numbers, there is a um, section in Microsoft 365 configuration. Uh, I'll just go ahead and put that on the chat, this configuration change. And there is a there is a button right there on the picture that needs to be unchecked. So you guys, oops, sorry. That was not for everybody. Okay, I'll put that on chat um, <clears throat> that you guys have to check and make sure that it's uh, unchecked. <laughs> checked, unchecked, sorry, too many checks. Uh, make sure that that button is unchecked so you, um, all that information comes in to our uh, site properly. Um, that will give you the ability to see if these um, users are, well, you shouldn't be able to see all this, but if they have M365 or if they're in ConnectWise, so let me just go ahead and cancel all these out. Oh, wow. So if they're in connect wise, but don't have Microsoft 365, you can see here. Uh, so you can actually come in and talk to the customer. Hey, well, you know, are these people still here? You know, and clean it up in your um, data source and all that good stuff. Any questions so far, as far as the user list is concerned, that was quick and unburdened. Oh, awesome, Jake. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're they're good people. So, yeah, we're uh, we're looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome, cool. I am at the top of the thirty minutes of canned content for this week's uh, onboarding. Well, I'm, I'm gonna start data. some trouble. I just want to say, if you ever meet George from Augment, you just <laughs> you just have to give him a hard time because Is it, because Alex told me to. You know, that too. I'm gonna but, <laughs> um, that too. If you say if you tell him this. He'll know exactly who said it. Um, tell him he looks like Freddie Mercury. He's got the mustache. He's got the, he looks like Freddie Mercury. So call him Freddie Mercury and he'll know exactly where it came from. All right. George from Augment, Freddie George Mercury. Pretty, he's got a it. community guy. So if you go to an event and you see somebody from Augment, it's probably him. Nice. Yeah, he's good people. Great people. Awesome. All right. I'm going to go ahead and kill recording. So if you guys have any questions, concerns about anything else, we can go ahead and talk about it. Uh, unless other than that, do you guys have any questions, concerns, emotional outbursts with onboarding and um, data cleanup at the moment? Alex, would you kindly explain the suspended and warning? Where's that? Oh. So if you're seeing those, there's something going on because I don't know what those mean tells me that somebody's deprovisioning licenses wrong. I, we don't see those in our demo environment. Um, not to say that you won't see them, but it sounds like there's something going on with that license without really opening up and looking in the um, 365 uh, admin portal. Right. Um, it would be really hard pressed to see exactly what that means. But my guess is that you've got an issue there very much with the uh, um, I'm not even sure what. Um, I'm not even sure what would cause that. To be totally honest, um, I, I would have your team go through and really figure out what your offboarding process looks like for licenses. Because my guess is they're improperly offboarding folks when they leave. But that is a hundred percent a guess. Steve, have you come come across this one? No. Come on, Steve. You had one job. It was to do. <laughs> hey, what? I'm telling you, Steve's going to teach this class. 
these weekly classes as soon as you know by next month he's i'm gonna just steve talk about this <laughs> and he's he's gonna be gonna he's nail. gonna be that guy and I, I, and I love him for it so we, we, so, always, we always do have fun with it that's for sure yeah so something just came to mind um I don't know that we, because we weren't using LCI at the time, but I have been in Office 365 tenants before when we were in the process of onboarding clients and we were transitioning them between the client billing to like the reseller billing. So when you're in the Office 365 tenant, you're looking at all the licensing or whatever. If you're not canceling the client billing portion, eventually that'll say suspended because Microsoft suspends it obviously because they're not they're not getting paid by the client anymore. Uh, and you've taken on so like when we onboard somebody in PAX eight or whatever, you know, we click provision, then you have the two individual license entities inside the 365 tenant. Does that make sense? Like you've got the reseller portion that you control through PAX eight or through your reseller, and then you have the the client used to be billed by the client or to the client portion. So that that might be what that is. I don't I don't know. That very I, much could I, be. I, yeah, I ran into that same problem, Jake. Um with one particular client who went direct to our billing through Pax8. And uh, even though we had told them, make sure you cancel your license because we don't have the authority to cancel it, they didn't do it. And we spent two months with Microsoft and the client straightening that out. That is an absolute nightmare. Yeah, they do not like to give back money. Microsoft is just like- <laughs> They don't. No. Very quick to pick it up though. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, you sent us money by mistake? Yeah, that's okay. Oh, you want it back? Nah, you're f screwed. <laughs> Good catch. Good catch. This is still recorded. All right, I'm going to cancel recording.